What's up nootropics lovers? My name is Monsol. I'm with Neutropedia and today I'm coming at you from beautiful Austin, Texas where fall has finally come and we're going to talk about nootropics that can help with recovering from traumatic brain injury. Now I want to make sure you know that this is not just from traumatic brain injury but also for preventing brain injuries and for uh, you know preventing long-term damage that's associated Associated with contact sports. Recently, I was working with a popular MMA fighter in order to help him develop a nootropic stack that could help him, since he's retired, to prevent long-term brain damage as a result of receiving many different blows to the head, whether it's in boxing, whether it's in kickboxing, Muay Thai, whatever the combat sport is. I wanted to make sure that he had the tools available so that he could prevent neurological decline after he has had so many impacts. Attacks. Now I want to be clear, this is important for anybody. As you can see, I played soccer growing up, which was a contact sport. I had numerous concussions and there are other sports like football where science is discovering more and more that these small concussive blows do have long-term effects on the brain. So I want to go over seven different nootropics that can help you not only in an acute injury sense, so for example if you have a concussion, but also at times when you might want to prevent injuries from happening or if you just have a history of damage to your brain through some type of contact sports like football, hockey, or soccer. So number one is fish oil and specifically high dose fish oil has been used in many circumstances to help treat traumatic brain injury. If you take a dosage of 20 grams per day of fish oil, then that equates to about 10 grams of omega-3s. Now I know this seems high, but this is a specific dosage that has been used for traumatic brain injury. For people who have an injury, they utilize high dose, in some cases up to you know five to 10 times the average recommended dose in order to overcome some of these problems with the injury. Another study found that DHA, or one specific aspect of fish oil and omega-3s, can actually act as a type of first responder when an injury occurs. So if you have a high dose of fish oil, and specifically the DHA, it can act as kind of a buffer in the event that you do get injured. So there's pretty good evidence to suggest not only is fish oil and omega-3s useful for pretty much any adult who is eating a uh, you know low fish diet but it's also really effective for a treating concussions and traumatic brain injuries and b also preventing some of the injuries that might occur so for many people who are doing some kind of combat sport i've done jujitsu no matter what it is if there's any chance you might get hit in the head it might be a good idea to practice using high dose fish oil now i know at 20 grams per day it can seem like it's incredibly expensive and for many people it might be out of the price availability for you however at 20 grams a day it's possible to get a molecularly distilled high quality product and only spend about hundred and sixty dollars per month now I know this is really you know uh, it's kind of a high price to pay but at the end of the day if you already have brain trauma if you already are in a combat sport taking a high dose of fish oil could be a way to prevent some long-term decline later on in your life. Now another nootropic is creatine monohydrate. Now the study in Norway in 2008 suggested that taking creatine for somebody who has traumatic brain injury could actually reduce their headaches, reduce their dizziness, and reduce the likelihood of becoming fatigued mentally when they're doing some type of work. So creatine monohydrate is a very effective uh, supplement for many reasons. You know, most people think of it as a way of improving their physical strength and size, but in reality, 
reality, it can be very useful for the cells of our brain and specifically for people who might have brain injuries. Now I know for a lot of people like wrestlers or boxers, MMA people, it can be kind of a trade-off because you're going to have a little bit extra weight from the creatine, but it's going to make you stronger, it's going to help you heal quicker, and more importantly, it's going to protect your brain. So my recommendation is to ensure a higher dose of creatine when you first start, maybe 20 grams a day for five days, and then go down to five grams a day as a basic you know, way of preventing some neurological decline. Now the third is magnesium glycinate, and the magnesium glycinate, using glycinate specifically is because of the bioavailability, but in a state where you have a concussion, getting adequate micronutrients is very important. In fact, to make this video, I consulted some of the research by Dr. Ja, J-H-A, and he works with NHL players when they have concussions, and one of the things he makes sure they do is get enough micronutrients. Now, most people are deficient in magnesium as it is. If you're an athlete and you have a brain injury, you're probably uh, very active, which means you might also be deficient in magnesium even more than usual. So I recommend taking a magnesium supplement anywhere between two to 400 milligrams per day. Now, if you have a history of brain injuries or a very acute injury, then taking magnesium glycinate is a great idea. Uh, it's also something that I would recommend taking over the long term. It's not going to help you and more than likely you're going to be deficient in magnesium so it could help you. Just make sure you take it closer to bedtime because it can uh, make you drowsy, can improve uh, calmness. And number four is N-acetylcysteine. And this is a prodrug for L-cysteine, which is just an amino acid. But what makes this useful is it actually helps to produce glutathione. And glutathione is what Dr. Mark Hyman calls the mother of all antioxidants. There is some evidence, one specific study, that suggests N-acetylcysteine can facilitate protection in those who have traumatic brain injury. It can actually facilitate some improvement improved learning abilities and improved neurological function. So these are four of the uh, non-invasive, you know, relatively safe nootropics that you can take. I recommend many of them on a daily basis, whether or not you're in some kind of a combat sport or prone to injury, but specifically if you're an athlete, if there's any chance of you getting hit in the head, even if it's playing soccer and you're just having the ball come and hit your head as you're heading the ball, there can be long-term consequences and we want to mitigate those as much as possible. Now for those who want to take it a step further and might be willing to do you know what some people might consider a little bit more experimental, I don't really consider it to be experimental, but a useful combination is piracetam, oxyracetam, and CDP choline. Now a 2009 study of piracetam showed that using this drug could actually help uh, prevent decline of individuals, usually elderly, who had some type of brain trauma. Now this is one of the most important nootropics and it's actually the specific nootropic that was developed in the 1960s that led to the term nootropic. Now oxyracetam is in the same family of drugs and it is more well studied for the purpose of neuroprotection. In fact, there are some studies specifically with animals that show using oxyracetam can prevent trauma when they are actually trying to traumatize an animal. So they take a rat or a, a mouse and they put a specific chemical called scoplamine and this supposed, is supposed to be similar to the chemical signature of a traumatic brain injury. And the studies showed that oxyracetam could prevent many of the problems associated with trauma in animal models. Now the final component to that is to add CDP choline and you will get the best results combining a choline source with the other two nootropics. Now this isn't for everybody. Some people don't need any choline at all, so kind of uh, determine for yourself whether or not the choline is necessary. My recommendation based on the liter literature is about 1600 to 2400 milligrams of both piracetam and oxyracetam and about two to 400 milligrams of CDP choline. 
Now the final nootropic before we get into some of the lifestyle changes that you can use is intranasal insulin. A 2017 study in the Journal of Cerebral Blood Flow and Metabolism showed that intranasal insulin, which is something that you can just spray into your nose, could actually increase memories and reduce neuroinflammation in animal models that had struggled with traumatic brain injury. Now, intranasal insulin obviously does come with some risks, but it's something that you can buy over the counter from Walmart and it's not very expensive. If you have a traumatic brain injury, if there is a concussion that you're struggling with, it may be a nootropic that you can use in order to overcome some of these symptoms. Now the studies on intranasal uh, insulin aren't you know, the most profound, they're not in high quantity, but it might be something for you to look at and experiment with if nothing else is working. Now briefly, I wanna touch on a few different lifestyle changes that you might want to incorporate that are from Dr. Ja, who works with the NHL players, as I mentioned. And some of these are specific specific for concussions or even just you know brain injuries that accumulate over time. Number one is to take naps if you need them. Try a 20 to 40 minute nap in the afternoons, especially if you've had a concussion recently. Now another recommendation that he has is to simply do meditation twice a day for about 20 minutes. Now I'm a big proponent of doing meditation in general, but it might be more effective if you have some type of brain injury. And the final lifestyle habit to try and maintain if you have an injury specifically to your brain is to try and avoid all processed foods. Now this is a, a general you know, health practice as best as possible, but in the specific instance where you have an injury, it might be even more important. So try and keep that in mind. So that's it guys. I know that a lot of you have had specific injuries in the past and I have been on the receiving end of those as well. So I wanted to give you a few tools that you could use. If you have a serious injury, you definitely need to go see a doctor before self-administering nootropics and supplements. But if it is something that you struggled with, it's already been in the past, it's many years ago, then there are some things that you can do now to help prevent the decline of your brain over time. And more importantly, for some people who are in combat sports now, there are things you can do, supplements you can take to prevent problems even in the event of an accident. I hope that's been useful. Let me know in any of the comments if you need help. See you next time.